Hi, my name is Sanjay Mukhopadhyay. I am a pathologist um, who specializes in looking at lung specimens under the microscope. And today I'm going to talk about the COVID-19 pandemic that we're in the middle of. Um, I decided to do this talk at the suggestion of Dr. Jared Gardner, who has made an impassioned plea um, on YouTube to people to take this pandemic seriously. I'm going to uh, focus on one of the manifestations of COVID-19 that happens in very severely ill patients, and that's called ARDS. And I'm going to try and explain to you what that looks like under the microscope and why that is such a serious form of lung disease that happens with these patients. So SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19 are the two sort of acronyms that we use for this um, disease. The first one is for the virus. So the coronavirus is known as severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2. That's quite a mouthful. So it's been um, abbreviated to SARS-CoV-2 and this is currently causing a pandemic. So I'm recording this in March uh, 2020. Globally uh, today, I just checked the WHO statistics there were 167,511 cases. This is globally. And there were 6,606 deaths. In the United States, we've just started testing patients. And um, already there is a pretty sharp upswing in the number of cases. There are cases in the state where I live, Ohio, as well as in, our, in the hospital where I practice. The infection that's caused by SARS-CoV-2 is called Corona virus disease or COVID and because it started in 2019 it's called COVID-19. So COVID-19 and SARS-CoV-2. It's now known from reports that just came out that severe COVID-19 can cause ARDS and why I'm qualifying it like this is that we all know by now that mild um, or asymptomatic examples of COVID-19 are actually the majority of cases and those cases, many of those patients recover completely or um, um, suffer relatively mild disease. But the most severe examples are indeed fatal and those patients have a syndrome known as ARDS, which I'm going to talk about in detail in this PowerPoint. So this paper that I'm sure, this table that I'm showing you is from a paper that just came out by Zhu and colleagues from China. The uh, title of the paper was Clinical Course and Risk Factors for Mortality of Adult Inpatients. Remember, these are only inpatients, so admitted people with COVID-19 in Wuhan, China, where the epidemic, uh, pandemic started. And this was a retrospective cohort study. What I want to show you is what the arrow points to at the bottom. So if you look at the columns, the first column up here um, refers to the total number of patients, which was 191. The next column over shows the non-survivors, that is the people who died. So there were 54 people out of the 191 who died um, of COVID-19 in this cohort and 137 people survived. So if you look at the ARDS row at the bottom, you'll see that of the total 191 patients, 59 of them developed ARDS, so that's 31. It's a very severe form of lung injury and it's really surprising that to me at least, that almost a third of them developed ARDS and maybe that's why they were in the hospital because they had more severe disease. But if you look at the non-survivors, that means the ones who died, the 50 patients who died, 93% of them had ARDS. So it's a really, really significant contributor to death in these patients. On the other hand, if you look at the survivors, the nine people who survived, only 7% of them had ARDS, meaning that only a, a minority of people have ARDS among the survivors. Or if you look at it the other way around, if you have ARDS, your likelihood of survival is pretty low. So what is ARDS? ARDS stands for Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. And that's really the main, it, it's almost self-explanatory for what the main definitional features of ARDS are. First of all, it has to be acute, that is the onset has to be within one week of a known clinical insult or new or worsening symptoms, which definitely applies to the coronavirus infection. Next is you might you have to have respiratory failure. In other words, your respiratory system has to fail. You have to have inability to breathe, 
which is hypoxia or shortness of breath, which the COVID patients have, and that must not be explained by heart failure or fluid overload. That's part of the definition. The third part is that you have to have very severe hypoxia, and I haven't gone into the, the levels here, but just to understand that your blood oxygen levels uh, fall when you get this kind of severe lung injury. And finally, you have to have bilateral lung opacities on chest imaging. So those are the definitional points. And what bilateral lung opacities means is bilateral means both sides. So you can see here on the chest x-ray that I've shown you that both sides are abnormal. And opacity simply means that there are um, it's, it makes the chest x-ray opaque. In other words, a chest x-ray where a normal should be black, both the lung fields should be black in color, those become white. And the more white it becomes, the more opaque it is. And the more white it's becoming, the more abnormal the lung is getting. So you can see in this chest x-ray that at least at the bottom of the lungs, um, it's almost a complete white out of the lungs. And that's a characteristic chest x-ray or CT feature of ARDS is white out of the lungs. So I hope you understand what the defining features of ARDS are. And now let me just show you an example of ARDS compared with a chest x-ray from a normal patient. You can see in the normal patient, you can see the ribs clearly. Um, you can see the black lung fields. The only white stuff that goes through there is the blood vessels, you know, you know that are supplying the, that are going into the lung. Those are what's causing the white. And of course, the structure in the middle is the heart. But other than that, the lung fields are basically black. And now if you compare it to the ARDS patient, you can see how much of a whiteout is um, present in the ARDS lung. I hope that explains to you how severely affected the lung of these patients, uh, the lungs are in these patients. Now, what causes ARDS? Infections are not the only cause, but they certainly top the list of causes that, that we look for because those are potentially treatable. So infections are, are a big cause of ARDS and viral infections are a super big cause. So garden variety influenza can cause ARDS in, a, in some proportion of patients. The SARS coronavirus uh, infection that happened um, in 2002-3, I think, that caused um, ARDS. The H1N1 flu, I, I had seen cases of that in 2011, 2010-11 uh, um, autopsy cases. Um, that caused um, ARDS. Um, the MERS definitely caused ARDS. And there are many other viral infections like cytomegalovirus and herpes and so forth that when very severe, those can cause ARDS when they affect the, the lungs. Then of course, toxic inhalants, the most um, uh, interesting ones are those that you get chemi severe chemical exposures to household bleach or to vaping. You know, when the current um, reports on vaping have reported that you can get uh, diffuse alveolar damage that causes ARDS. Toxic drugs, the most classic of which are chemotherapy drugs. So chemotherapy drugs can cause diffuse alveolar damage and ARDS. Toxic ingestant certainly can. When you aspirate gastric acid for any reason, that can cause ARDS. And of course, the classic um, uh, causes are shock and sepsis. When, when there's just disseminated infection all over the body, that can cause this syndrome of acute respiratory distress and as can irradiation. So infections are not the only cause. Um, and uh, certainly viruses are not the only cause, but, but they top the list of causes. This is what ARDS looks like under the microscope. It causes a um, series of changes that we as pathologists call diffuse alveolar damage. And this is what it looks like. This is not at all what a normal lung looks like. And I'll try to show you the difference uh, between diffuse alveolar damage and a normal lung. So on the left hand side is a lung with diffuse alveolar damage. So you can see the these are the walls of the air sacs that we breathe through. And this is very, very highly magnified. So you're seeing a very, very close up look that only a pathologist is, uh, uh, usually sees. So on the left hand side is diffuse alveolar damage. On the right hand side is a completely normal lung. And you can see how thin the walls of the air sacs are. All the white stuff in between is just air. And then the tissue is the walls of the air sacs. I, I hope you can appreciate the difference. Now, what happens in a normal alveolus or air sac, you'll have to forgive my drawing here because I'm drawing with my right hand and I'm left-handed, is that um, the normal air sac gets diffusely damaged by the agents that I showed you. Let's um, talk about infection here. 
So in a normal air sac, the point is to get oxygen from the middle of the air sac through the wall of the uh, alveolus or the air sac into the red structures, which are the capillaries. And the smaller red structures within the bigger red structures are red blood cells. So the point is to get oxygen from the air through this barrier into the red blood cells and then the red cells take the oxygen to the rest of the body. Now for that reason, the barrier between the air and the red blood cell is on purpose as thin as, as it can possibly be. So nature has, uh, has evolved in a way that the wall of the alveolus is very, very thin in a normal person. And so oxygen can easily get from the air space in between to the red blood cell. Now what happens in diffuse alveolar damage, and let's see if I can make a little uh, drawing here, is that diffuse alveolar damage diffusely damages the, um, the alveolus. So it da damages this wall, it damages the capillaries, it damages the lining cells of the alveolus. These are called pneumocytes. Everything is diffusely within the alveolus damaged. So the virus, in this case, sars cov two would be getting into the alveoli and damaging the alveolus diffusely in a, in a proportion of patients that develop ARDS. And this is what's going on at a microscopic level. It's wiping off all this stuff. It's damaging all these cells. And the debris that accumulates from all that damage sort of lines the wall of the alveolus the same way a, a line of paint would, would line a, um, the wall if you painted it. So, and, and if you've painted it really thick, you'd have a thicker lining. So these yellow structures, actually they look pink under the microscope, are called the, the debris and detritus of all that damage. That's called hyaline membranes. And part of the hyaline membranes are um, formed by all the plasma protein that leaks out from these capillaries. The capillaries are rendered leaky by all the damage that's undergone, plus the debris from the epithelial cells and the endothelial cells of the capillaries. All that detritus lines the alveoli and makes these hyaline membranes. And the hyaline membranes are a hallmark of diffuse alveolar damage and diffuse alveolar damage is the pathologic picture of the acute respiratory distress syndrome. And as I've already said, the acute respiratory distress syndrome is caused in a subset of um, COVID-19 cases. So this is what happens at a microscopic level. And what does that look like under the microscope? It looks like this. So the picture on the left is diffuse alveolar damage or DAD. And you can see these hyaline membranes. So the, the pink linear structures that you see are the hyaline membranes. And the cells behind that are the actual wall of the alveolus. So between the two green arrows on the left-hand side picture, I've shown you how the wall of the alveolus is starting to get cells in there. Those are mainly fibroblasts that make scarring. So eventually the wall of the alveolus gets thicker than it should be. So you can see on the left-hand side in a normal alveolus, the wall is extremely thin, as I said, to facilitate the transfer of oxygen. And the thicker this wall gets, the harder it is to transfer oxygen, the more you feel short of breath, and the more and more you start moving towards severe illness and possibly death. So I'm going to show you what happens with time as you get diffuse alveolar damage. Again, on the right is normal, left is DAD. And you can now see the wall is even thicker than it was in the previous image. The process has started organizing, meaning started getting fibroblasts and the wall is getting of the alveolus is getting thicker and even more abnormal. So here's the early phase with hyaline membranes and a thick wall, but not that thick. And uh, But you can still say it's very much thicker than in normal um, uh, lung and then you can see in the late phase or what we call organizing phase in pathology that the wall gets extremely thick look at the distance between the two green arrows these both these pictures are taken at same magnification you can see how much thicker the wall is than it should be and this greatly impedes oxygen exchange and makes the patient ve feel very very sick and short of breath and the oxygen levels in there blood fall very, very low. So this is a very serious disease um, and, a, and a very serious pathology that's going on in the lungs of these patients, all because of the damage that's caused by this virus. My take home message to you is not to take COVID-19 lightly. Please don't dismiss this. 
as oh it's just another you know just another viral infection that will pass the most severe forms of covid-19 can cause ARDS as i've shown you this is a very highly dangerous and potentially fatal form of lung damage please take all the precautions that the cdc is outlining please protect yourself your family and others thank you for listening